A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Rufus Van Port sat in his large business office in St. Louis and listened as his business partner, John Holly, talked. Rufus, you've been making trips to the far west to buy cattle for over 20 years. Time you took it easy and let your son, Ted, take over and do our cattle buying. No, it isn't that I don't trust Ted's judgment, John. I know he could do it. Then why in tarnation do you hesitate to send him? He's a good horseman, a fine marksman. He certainly ought to be able to take care of himself out there. Of course he could. Well, then, what's your reason for not wanting him to go? John, Ted's all I have now that Martha's gone. Suppose the West appeals to him so much he doesn't want to come back to this business. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. Why would he want to stay out there? <clears throat> John, there's something no one else ever knew except Martha. I'm going to tell you now. Oh, what? Ted isn't really our son. What? We adopted him. But I thought... Uh Uh-huh. Like everyone else, you thought Ted was born in Kansas City when Martha was visiting her folks there while I went west on a cattle buying trip. That's right. Well, it didn't happen that way at all. I brought Ted back with me from the west when he was about six months old. Well, tell me about it. I took a stage from Pecos on the way back east. A young woman with two babies rode in the same coach with me. They were twin boys. She seemed poverty-stricken and unhappy. Mm, Go on, Rufus. The stage stopped at a way station. The driver and I went inside for food. When we came back to the coach, the woman was gone. But one of the babies was still there with a note pinned to his blanket addressed to me. You see, the woman and I had talked a little during the trip. She deserted the baby boy? Yes, In the note, she asked me to take him and bring him back east. We tried to find her, but couldn't. So I brought him home with me. That baby was Ted. Great Scott, Rufus. I I never thought for one minute Ted wasn't your own flesh and blood. Martha and I adopted him legally, so he is my son. Ted knows he's adopted, but he doesn't know the details. You know, John, I always felt that if he went to the far west, he might stay there. If he goes this time, he'll be going right to the territory where I first found him. Well, what of it? Um, I reckon I am being foolish. When I think of that trip, I don't feel like facing the hardships of travel. Ted will be excited about going, Rufus. Uh, He deserves the chance to show what he can do. All right, John. I'll let Ted go in my place. He'll leave day after tomorrow. Several weeks later, a young man with a hard, cold look on his face backed toward the door of the cafe in a town near Pecos. The gun in his hand was steady as he spoke. The first one who makes a move will get a bullet, Savvy. You won't get away with this, dude. (laughs) I'm getting away with it. Glad you all carried so much cash with you. Go on. Let's get him. Be careful. The second Billy the Kid. Yeah, he cleaned us of all our cash. There he goes. He's getting away. Come on.
The next afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, rode the trail through the hills east of Pecos. We still hunt for Eaton gang, Kimasari? No, Tonto. Eaton and his men are said to have crossed the border. Right now, we're looking for a lone wolf bandit called the Dude. Oh, we not hear of him. When I talked to the United States Marshal in Pecos about the Eaton gang yesterday, I heard about the Dude. The Marshal said his name is really Tom Willis, a fellow about 21. He used to live in this territory with his mother on a run-down farm. Oh. Young Willis resented being so poor and kept to himself most of the time. His mother died a year ago. And he turned bandit and is trying to follow in the footsteps of Billy the Kid. Mm, that's not good. After he obtained money by robbing people, Willis bought fancy clothes and riding gear. Because of that, he became known as a dude. So far, he hasn't killed anyone. But he's become bolder lately and may turn killer. Ah. Yesterday in broad daylight, he held up the cafe in Brighton near here. He's very clever at covering his tracks. They try to find him before he does commit murder. Come on, sir. You must count. A strange twist of fate, Ted Van Port, who, unknown to others, was a twin brother of Dude Willis, arrived that same day at the nearest railroad station and hired a horse to ride westward to Pecos. Come on, boy. Get up there. Well, Dude, what's the matter? As he rounded a bend in the trail not far from Brighton, he came face to face with the sheriff and his men. Up, sheriff. It's the Dude. Reach. Up, we Oh, hold on. The bullets came mighty close. I notice you're wearing a sheriff's badge. You ask why you and your men fired your guns? Listen, dude, Willis. I know you're tricky and all that. One move out of here and you get a bullet. You've yeah, made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. That's not my name. Yeah, listen to him. Yeah, he even acts like a dude now. Take his gun, somebody. I'll get a sheriff. Keep him covered. Uh, I got it. I don't understand this treatment. I'm a law-abiding citizen. <laughs> well, there he goes again. He sure puts on an axe. Yeah, he sure does. Dude, we all know you by sight. You can't pull that loco talk on us. We're taking you back to Brighton to jail. You have a lot to account for. I tell you, you made a mistake. My name is Ted Van Port. I just arrived in the West. Tommy Roth, we all know you was born near here. Someone must have creased you with a bullet to make you talk that way. But if you give me time, I can prove what I say. Shut I have... up, dude. Now turn around and head for town. You're going to jail. You'll stay there a long, long time. But it... Now go on, go on. Uh, uh, get up. Get, get up, up. Go on. Get get up. Up. Get up. That evening, Tonto left the camp he and the Lone Ranger made in the hills and rode to Brighton for supplies and news. Later, he returned. Most come, most come. Easy, easy, easy. Well, Tonto, any news in town? Ah, sheriff and them capture fella we here to find. Them have dude Willis in jail. That is news. Ah, but me not like way men talk, Kimasari. Well, what do you mean? Well, me stand at back of cafe and listen. Them plenty mad at dude Willis. Them say him not deserve just to go to jail. Them plan to get Willis from jail at midnight. Tonto, it's almost midnight now. They ride to town and try to stop the mob from hanging that man. Easy, steady, easy, count, easy, fella. Come on, fill the mob's town. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue. In town, as midnight approached, an angry mob gathered in front of the jail. All right, men, let's go in. Follow me. Hey, what's going on out here? Oh, go for your gun, Jake. We don't aim to harm you, but we do aim to go into the jail and take your prisoner, dude, will you? Now, hold on. You can't do it. It's my duty Cover to go. Cover him, men. Take right, his gun. Right. Wait, got it. Uh, there are the keys. 
Now, a couple of you men come with me and we'll bring out Willis. Before long, dude, Willis will pay for his crimes and be a lesson to all other young coyotes who think they can terrorize his territory. Come on, go. Within a short time, Ted Van Fort, mistaken for his twin brother, Dude Willis, was taken from the cell and led for testing outside to the big oak tree in front of the jail. Wait, you're making a mistake. I'm not the man you want. No use trying to pull loose, Willis. We're here to see you get the punishment you deserve. What's going on here? We're going to string up this dirty coyote here, and you're not going to stop it. The law will take care of him. I'm not going to let you take the law into your own hands like this. Don't talk, Sheriff. A dozen men have you covered. Take yeah. that gun. Just keep quiet if you know what's good for you. Tie the dude's hands behind his back no. and put him on a horse. No. Then we'll get on with the proceedings. No. Still protesting his innocence, Ted Van Fort was placed in a horse with his hands tied behind him, and the horse was led under the large oak tree. All right, we're ready. I'll toss the end of the rope over that limb up there. As the leader of the mob gave his attention to the rope, there was a sudden interruption. What was your Look, coming from between the buildings. Must be a gang. Come to rescue him. Duck for cover, everybody. The sudden appearance of the racing horsemen disconcerted the townsmen. Their leader turned to fire at the masked man. One of them smashed out of him. When they saw their leader fall, the men in the mob were momentarily panic-stricken and scurried for cover as Tato and the Lone Ranger bore down on them. The masked man faced the crowd with drawn guns while Tato cut the rope that bound Ted's wrists and handed him a gun. There, now you're free. Take guns. Oh, thanks. Let's get away from here. Turning in their saddles, the three men fired over the heads of the mob as they hurriedly rode between the buildings. Oh, get up. Lone Ranger and Tato took pains to cover their trail after they left town. Finally, they arrived at their camp with Ted. Oh, 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 thanks. You men saved my life. They got away with it only because the crowd was taken completely by surprise, Willis. I'm not Willis. Everybody says I am, but my name is really Ted Van Port. I arrived from the East only today. I don't understand all this. Tell me more about yourself. Briefly, Ted told of his father and his life in the East. He showed credentials which the sheriff had failed to remove from his pocket. When he finished, the Lone Ranger spoke. I believe you, Ted. We'll help you. Thanks, but but what do you make of all this? Well, Ted, I've heard of your father, Rufus Van Tort. He's been coming west to buy cattle for many years. That's right. You say he told you you were adopted? That's true. When I was just a baby, a woman left me in a stagecoach in which Dad was riding. He brought me east and adopted me. He said she... Wait a minute. There was another baby boy. I remember now the woman told Dad we were twins. Perhaps Dude Willis is that other baby. Your twin brother. That must be it. But to think of my brother being a crook. Circumstances could bring that about, Ted. The main thing right now is to find Dude Willis and prove to the sheriff and the townsmen that they made a mistake. We'll start at dawn and try to pick up Dude's trail. The following morning, early, the Lone Ranger with Tonto and Ted set out to find Dude's trail. They spent an unsuccessful day, then returned to camp. Tonto again rode to town for supplies. When he arrived at the camp, he brought helpful news. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. You came back in a hurry, Tonto. Ah, me here in town, Dude Willis, hold up stage this afternoon near Nara Pass. Well, that's a break for us. Maybe we'll be able to pick up his trail from there. We'll take Ted with us and leave at once. A posse had been forming to ride to Narrow Pass when Tato left town. Consequently, the masked man, the Indian, and Ted arrived there first and found the bandit's trail, which they followed. Dude, as usual, had covered his tracks carefully, but the Lone Ranger and Tato, due to their long training and experience, were soon able to uncover them and continue toward Dude's hiding place. Meanwhile... In an old prospector shack, Dude lay resting after the stage holed up. <laughs> uh, I'll soon have enough to take things real easy. Hey, something bothering my horse out there. Three riders coming. He'll get a good hot reception. Dude crouched near the partly open window, facing the direction from which the three horsemen were approaching. Just before they came within gun range, they separated. Uh, Gonna try to trick me by coming in from different angles. Stay back or I'll drill you. That masked man on the white stallion. I've heard of him. 
As bullets whined through the open window, dude jumped. When he looked again, the masked man wasn't in sight. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Ted had dismounted among the trees and under cover of the tall brush moved cautiously toward the shack. Dude watched closely, gun ready. Suddenly, from the window across the room behind him, he heard a voice. Stop your gun, Willis. Hey, what the... Dude whirled to fire at the masked figure. You don't shoot. Oh, my arm. Pick up his gun, Tonto. Uh, me get gun. Well, Willis, you're through. Ted, come on in. Hey, what? Uh, I see now why I was mistaken for him. Why, he... He looks just like me. That's right, he does. Exactly like you. Ah. Them look like same feller. If them not dressed different, me not know one from other. Why, I don't see me. Keep Willis covered, Toto. Uh Uh-huh. I'll go outside to meet the sheriff's posse. Hey, that's the masked man who took Willis away. All right, cover him, eh? All right, Sheriff. Some of my men are behind the shack. If Willis and your Indian partner are inside, they can't escape. Now, hold on, Sheriff. I'm not an outlaw. I carry a note from the Pecos Marshal to you. And here it is. Why, Thunder Men, according to this note, the masked man and Indian are friends. They came to help hunt for Dude Willis. That's right. What's more, that white stallion in the paint back among the trees. Now it comes back to me who the masked man and Indian are. Well, mister, I reckon you did me a good turn last night saving Dude Willis. Hope he didn't get away. No, he didn't. But I want to warn the men who started to take the law into their own hands. They would have been sorry if they'd succeeded. No, we wouldn't, mister. That crook deserves that. But there'll be no more mob justice, understand? I think I can show these men how wrong they were, Sheriff. Hello, bring out Dude Willis. Here, Willis, Kimasabi. Man, is this the man you intended to hang last night? He's the one. You know darn well he is. Ted, will you come out? Take a good look. Who is this man? Jiminy, he looks like Dude Willis. Which one is Dude Willis? Can anyone here tell me? Doggone if I can tell him a plot. Now, this man is not Willis. Yet he's the one you almost hung last night. That's right. The man standing near my Indian friend is really Dude Willis. It's a long story... These two men are twin brothers. What? what? Twin brothers? Hey, my mother said I had a twin brother. She left him on a stagecoach years ago on some cattle buyer took him east. That's right, dude. My, my father told me the same story. Uh, Mom died. We were poor and... Well, I was sick of not having anything. I... I sort of went loco... I reckon you didn't expect to find you had a twin brother who's a crook. Well, maybe after you've finished your prison term, dude, you'll decide to go straight. If you do, we'll get together. Young fella, you told us you were Ted Van Port. I reckon we owe you an apology. Oh, forget it, Sheriff. Mask man, thanks for what you've done. Twin boys, eh? The good and the bad. Dude will go to jail, but his brother's offered him a chance for the future. I, I hope he takes it. I hope you men have learned a lesson by this. That it doesn't pay to be hasty in your judgment or your actions. Mob rule can ruin the West. The law must make all decisions, not a bunch of angry hotheads. Remember that, and you'll think twice before you try to take the law into your own hands again. That's telling him, mister. We'll get Dude to jail now. He'll stand trial for his crimes. Maybe someday he'll be living a decent life with his brother. Who knows? I hope so. We'll say goodbye now. Adios, everyone. Ted, there goes one of the greatest Americans, one of the finest hombres in the West. You know, sometimes right and wrong are hard to tell apart, just like twins. But he can always find the right. Yes, sir, you're mighty lucky he came along when he did. You see, he's none other than the Lone Ranger.
copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.